Question 6 from the 2023 National 5 Physics Examination from the SQA. It's a big long question, but we'll see. It's quite easy to do. The natural greenhouse effect is vital for sustaining life on Earth. The no greenhouse temperature is the average surface temperature on Earth if there were no natural greenhouse effect. The no greenhouse temperature T can be determined using the relationship T squared equals 280 squared times the square root of 1 minus alpha divided by D squared. And we're given what these symbols mean. T is the no greenhouse temperature in Kelvin. Alpha is the proportion of incoming solar radiation that the Earth reflects. And D is the mean distance from the Sun in astronomical units AU. The value of alpha for the Earth is taken to be 0 0.290, and the mean distance from the Sun to the Earth is 1.00 AU. I mean, I to find the no greenhouse temperature of the Earth, and we're given five responses. Now, it looks a very harsh question, but all it really is testing us out on is can we put some data into an expression and get the answer? That's all we're asked to do. So let's do that then. I'm using our calculators. So we've got t squared equals 280 squared times the square root of 1 minus alpha over d squared. If we put in the appropriate values for alpha and d, we get that expression there. t squared equals 280 squared times the square root of 1 minus 0 0.290 divided by 1 squared. Now we know that 1 squared is 1, so that then will become t squared is going to equal to 280 squared times the square root of 1 minus 0 0.290. Now to do that, we use our calculator. So our calculator is now up on the screen, and all we have to do for the calculator is just put in the numbers. So 280 squared, that's 280 squared put in, multiplied by the square root, and keep things in brackets, so a bracket of 1 minus 0 0.290, 0 0.290. 0 0.290. Zero, and we've got to close the bracket as well. So that's our first calculation, and it's going to give us that answer there. So t squared is that answer, but we are not after t squared. We're after we're after the value of t. So what we have to do is take the square roots of the answer. So square root of the answer we got, and that's going to give us two five seven point zero two. Now if we look very closely at our responses. Then two five seven point zero two is definitely going to be a response of D. Just bring that calculator up again to show you that. 257.0 is our answer, and that's going to be response D. Question 7 from the 2023 National 5 Physics Exam. Doris is a small, rocky, irregular-shaped object that orbits the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. Doris is an example of, and you've got five responses there. So let's eliminate them by beginning with the last response. That's going to be response E, a star. Now what's a star? Well, a star is a massive body that gives off its own light due to nuclear reactions in its core. So it's definitely not Doris. What about a planet? Well, a planet is a body that is round, is spherical, and it orbits a star. But the most important thing is that its orbit which it moves in is completely clear of any rocks or debris. It's got an orbit all to itself because it's such a massive thing that it actually clears away all the debris. What about an exoplanet? Well, first of all, a planet is not Doris. What about an exoplanet? Could that be Doris? No, because an exoplanet is a planet which exists outside our own solar system. So it can't be Doris. What about a dwarf planet? What's the difference between a dwarf planet and a planet? Well, a dwarf planet is a body that is round and spherical, and it orbits a star, just like a planet, but the only difference is that in its path, its orbital path, it's got rocks in its way, because it's not got enough mass to actually bring these rocks in together or push them away. So really, the orbital path of a dwarf planet is full of debris, full of rocks. And that leaves us with just one response, and that's going to be an asteroid. So Doris is, in fact, an asteroid. And if you go and look it up on the NASA website, the fact file, you'll get something like this. If I can bring it out for you. An asteroid sometimes is called a minor planet. They're rocky, airless remnants left over from early formation of the solar system about 4.6 billion years ago. And we currently know there's about 1,284,000 1, 
785 of them known. Most of its ancient space rubble can be found orbiting the Sun between Mars and Jupiter. We've clinched it. So, what we know from this then, the rest of it goes on to explain, is that for the response for number 7, Doris must be an asteroid. So the correct response is going to be 7A. Doris is an asteroid. Question 8 from the 2023 National 5 Physics Examination. A space vehicle of mass 350 kilograms is free-falling vertically towards the surface of Mars. Rocket engines now have fired, which apply a combined upward force of 2,200 newtons on the vehicle. Now you can see a diagram of the vehicle there. Now just after rocket engines are fired, the vehicle will, and we're given a few possible responses, it says just after the rocket engines are fired, the vehicle will A, move away from the surface of Mars at a constant speed, move away from the surface of Mars with an increasing speed, move towards the surface of Mars with a constant speed, and move towards the surface of Mars with a decreasing speed. Move towards the surface of Mars with an increasing speed. Okay, so let's see what in fact is going on in this question. We have to look at the forces which are on the spacecraft itself. So here we have the spacecraft here, and we know that the downward force acting on it has got to be the weight. So it's the weight which is causing it to free fall all the way down to the planet. And we can easily calculate the weight. We have to be very careful because the weight equals mg, g being the gravitational field strength, not of the Earth, but of the planet Mars, and that's 3.7 newtons per kilogram. So we do that calculation, we get weight equals 350 newtons times 3.7 newtons per kilogram, and we get the weight of the spacecraft to be 1,295 newtons. But we are told that there's going to be an upward force caused by the rocket engines from the thrust. So the thrust causes an upward force to be the value of 2,200 newtons. Now, right away, you can see it's going to be an unbalanced force acting on the spacecraft, and the unbalanced force is going to be 905 newtons acting up the way. So you've got an unbalanced force acting up the way, which will mean you're going to have an acceleration acting up the way. But that acceleration is acting in the opposite direction of its movement. It's free-falling down towards the surface. So therefore, that acceleration will cause the spacecraft, indeed, to reduce its speed as it approaches the surface of Mars. So, let's look at the response and see which one we can use. Well, response number A, we can see is going to be, is it going to move away from the surface of Mars at constant speed? No. Constant speed, definitely not, because it's going to have an unbalanced force. So we can rule out all the constant speed ones. So, response C is incorrect. And we can look forward to the next one. Move away from the surface of Mars with an increasing speed. No, because it's actually falling towards the surface of Mars, which means it's going to have a velocity towards the surface of Mars. So it's not going to move away with increasing speed right away, so therefore we're going to call that one false. Response D is going to move towards the surface of Mars with a decreasing speed. Now, that is correct, because as it moves, free falls down towards the surface of Mars, you're going to fire these rockets, we're going to produce an unbalanced force upwards, we're going to produce an acceleration in the opposite direction, which is going to be a deceleration, which means it's going to, in fact, decrease its speed as it moves towards the surface of Mars. So at this particular point in time, D seems the correct answer. Response E is going to move towards the surface of Mars with an increasing speed. No, because in this case it's still free-falling down and you have to overcome that vertical downward speed by applying the deceleration caused by the rocket's thrust. So D is going to be wrong. So the correct response is going to move towards the surface of Mars with a decreasing speed. And we can see that from our diagram here. We have an unbalanced force acting upwards, which is practically putting the brakes on it when you think about it, as it's moving down the way. So it's going to be moving response D towards the surface of Mars with a decreasing speed. Question 9 from the 2023 National 5 Physics Examination. A uniform electric field exists between plates Q and R. The diagram shows the path taken by a particle P as it passes through the field. Which row on the table identifies the charge on particle P, the charge on plate Q, and the charge on plate R? Now, it's quite a conundrum, this problem, so we have to remember one thing, that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. 
So let's begin by imagining that the particle P is negatively charged. That's this one here, negatively charged. Now, if this is to be the trajectory, then it must mean that this plate here is going to be positive charge. Now, it's going to be negative charge, because remember, the negative particle will be attracted towards the positive plate and repel from the negative plate. So we're looking for P to be negative, which could be this one here, and the charge in plate Q to be, to be negative, but that's obviously false, so we can rule out this one here. Okay, so we'll start again. And it says, in response B, that the charge on particle B is no charge. Well, if it's got no charge, it will not be affected by the electric field. So we can rule out the no charge responses. Because if it's not got an electric charge, it will not be affected by the electric field between those two plates. So now let's see if it's a positive charge, the last two responses. So if particle P is a positive charge, it's going to be attracted to the opposite sign in the plate. So R must be negative and Q must be positive. So we're looking for particle P to be positive, so it could be response D or E. We're looking for part charge in plate Q to be positive, and it's this one here, but it's not negative. And the R plate, the charge in plate R, must be negative. So the correct response, with a bit of deduction, is going to be response E. The particle's positive, it's deflected away from the positive plate up here and is attracted towards the negative plate down here as it makes its way here. So the correct response for question 9 is E. Question 10 from the 2023 National 5 Physics Examination. Alternating current AC can be defined as a current where a, only negative charges move. B, charges move in only one direction only. C, charges reverse direction at regular intervals. D, only positive charges move. And E, the rate of flow of charge is constant. Well, as we can see from our little movie we've inserted into the question, you can see that alternating current is going to be charges which reverse direction at regular intervals. You can see that we have an AC source, the electrons go one way, and then they go the other way after a particular period of time. And that's what we mean by alternating current. And you can see a little graph drawn there, that the current goes one direction, the positive axis, and down the other direction in the negative axis. So the response for question D is C, charges reverse direction at regular intervals. <laughs>